Today, I'm going to explain programs that attack. Here, we'll discuss a few programs that attack computer system to cause some damage. First one is virus. What is a virus? A virus is a computer program that attaches itself to another legitimate program and causes damage to the computer systems or to the network. You can observe the diagram. The figure A shows its original clean code. That figure B shows virus infected code. And the figure 3 shows its a virus code. In the figure 3, because of viruses attacked the file, therefore, the files can be deleted or the files can be altered and also it can it can send a copy of my set to all using this user's address book during its lifetime the virus will go through the four phases first one it is called as dormant phase second one it is propagation phase third one is triggering phase and the fourth one is execution phase. What is meant by dormant phase? In the dormant phase, virus is idle, but it will get activated based on certain event or actions. For example, typing a certain key or certain date or time it is reached, etc. This is an optional phase. Second phase is called as a propagation phase. In this phase, virus copies itself and each copy starts creating more copies of more copies of self, thus propagating the virus. Third one it is called triggering phase. Here a dormant virus moves into this phase when the action or event for which it has waiting is initiated. The last phase is called as execution phase. This is the actual work of the virus which could be armless. That means that can display some message on the screen or it can be destructive. That means delete a file on the disk. Virus can be classified into following categories. One is called as a parasitic virus, a second one is memory resident virus, boot sector virus, stealth virus, polymorphic virus and metamorphic virus. What is meant by parasitic virus? This is the most common of viruses. This virus attaches itself to executable files and keeps replicating. Whenever the infect file, infected file is executed, the virus looks for other executable files to attach itself and it will be spread. Memory resident virus. This type of virus first attaches itself to an area of the main memory and then infects every executable program that is executed. Third one is boot sector virus. This type of virus, it will be infects the master boot record of the disk and spreads on the disk when the operating system start booting the computer. Stealth virus. This virus has intelligence built in which prevents antivirus software programs for directing it. Polymorphic virus. A virus that keeps changing its signature, that is identity, on a very execution. It is very difficult to detect. Metamorphic virus. In addition to changing its signature like polymorphic virus, this type of virus keeps rewriting itself every time, making its detection very harder. Similarly, virus. Another 
program it destroy the files that is called as a worm what is meant by worm a worm does not perform any destructive actions indeed only consume system resources to bring it to down this can shown in the figure you can observe in this diagram it will perform resource eating task but no destruction this is a replicate itself in the second stage again it will be replicates itself as shown in the figure here worm does not perform any destructive action and instead only consume system resources and it will be bring the computer down for example is a trojan horse this trojan horse is a hidden piece of code is like a virus the purpose of trojan horse is will be different but main purpose of a virus is to make some sort of modifications to the target computer or a network but trojan horse attempts to reveal confidential information to an attacker so that's why you can define like this trojan horse allows an attacker to obtain some confidential information about a computer or a network this is one example for trojan horse when the user enters the user id and password the trojan horse could capture these details and send this information to the attacker without the knowledge of the user who had entered the id and password the attacker can then use this user id and password to gain access to the system this can you can show uh, see in this diagram applets and active x controls these were born due to the technological development of the world wide web that is www application simply will be referred as a web of the internet web consists of communication between client and server computers using a communication protocol that is sttp hyper text transfer protocol the client uses a piece of software that is called as a web browser the server runs a program called as a web server a browser will send a way send a hypertext transfer protocol request for a web page to a web server the web server locates this web page and sends it back to the web browser again using http the web browser interprets the contents of that file and shows the result on the screen to the user this we can show in this diagram so here the client sends a request for a web page called as www.yahoo.com/information which the server sends back to the client so many web pages contain small programs that can download it to the client along with the web page itself these programs then execute inside the browser sun microsystems it provides java applets for this purpose and microsoft technology make use of active x controls for the same purpose small programs that get downloaded along with the web page and then execute on the client this you can observe in this diagram here the server sends an applet 
along with the web page to the client. These programs, that is applets or ActiveX controls, are used to either perform some processing on the client side or automatically and periodically request for information from the web server using a technology called client full. So web page showing the latest shock stock prices on a stock exchange and the periodical issues HTTP request for pulling the updated prices to the web server. After obtaining this information, the program could display it on the user's screen. Java applet to prevent the applet applets and ActiveX controls. We can use Java applet. These applets have strong security checks as to what they can do and what they cannot. ActiveX controls have no such restrictions. New version of applets are called as assigned uploads. These are allows access similar to ActiveX controls. Java applets and provides ActiveX controls or client side programs that might cause security problems if used by attackers with a malicious intention. Cookies. What is meant by cookie? Cookies are pieces of information generated by a web server and stored in the user's computer. These are ready for future access. Cookies are embedded in the HTML information flowing back and forth between the user's computer and the services. So why we are using the cookies? Suppose that a client sends an HTTP request for a web page to the server, then web server locates a page on the disk, it will be sent back to the client and completely forgets about this interaction. Suppose if the client wants to continue this interaction, it must identify itself to the server in the next HTTP request. Otherwise, server would not know that this same client had sent a HTTP request earlier. Since a typical application is like to involve number of interactions between the client and the server, there must be some mechanism for the client to identify itself to the server each time it sends on HTTP request to the server. For this purpose, cookies are used. Cookies are the most popular mechanism of maintaining the state information. Cookies works as follows. When you interact with a website for the first time, the site might want you to register yourself. That means web server sent a page to you wherein you have format to enter your name, address and other details such as date of birth, interest, etc. When you complete this form and send it to the server with the help of your browser, the set the server stores this information into its database. It also creates a unique ID. It stores this ID along with your information in the database and also sends ID back to in the form of cookie. This you can show in the fig this figure. The next time you interact with the server, you do not have to enter any information such as your name and address. 
your browser would automatically send your ID that is cookie along with the HTTP request for a particular page to the server. This you can show in this figure. The server now take this ID, tries to find a match in its database and having found it, knows that you are a registered user. Accordingly, it sends you the next page. It should be a simple welcome message. This could be used for many other purposes. Some modern tricks allow attackers to misuse cookies in terms of collecting personal data and invading people's privacy. This attack will be work is as follows. For example, an advertising agency, say my ads, contacts major websites and places banner ads for its corporate clients products on their pages. It pays some fees to the site owners for this. Instead of providing an actual image that can be embedded by the respective websites in their pages directly, it will provide a link to add to each page. This is shown in figure. Each URL contains a unique number in the file part. For example, http www myads.com and a sequence number dot jpg in this example http colon slash www dot myads dot com slash five seven two six seven four zero nine one nine dot jpeg when a user visits a page for the first time the browser fetches the advertisement image from my ads along with the main, main HTML page for the site it is visiting. When the user visits the main site, my ad sends a cookie to the browser containing a unique user ID and records the relation between this user ID and the file name. When the same user visits another page, the browser sees another reference to my ads. Then the browser sends the previous cookies to my ads and also fetches the current page from my ads to as before. My ads knows that same user has visited another web page now and it adds this reference to its database. Here, my ads has a lot of information about the web pages, the user visits, the actions it performs, etc. The advertisement from my ads can be a single pixel in the same background color, making it even more difficult for the user to know the advertisements are appearing. Thank you.